Hey everybody, welcome to the next and final episode, for the time being, of uh, our Staples series of uh, Arkham Horror the Card Game. We've talked about Guardians, Seekers, Rogues, Mystics, and Survivors, and for once, the Neutrals get their time to shine. Uh, because they fit everywhere, and they're going to be in pretty much all the deck lists that we're going to be talking about some of these cards. Yep. So this, uh, this video is to supplement our extended deck guides, which are going to be coming out in the near future. Uh, rather than us talk about all these cards over and over and over again in those videos, we're going to be talking about them here. So Bryn, I'm going to throw this one to you. It's emergency cash. For zero? <laughs> And a card. You get three resources. It's just better than spending three actions to get three resources, because you still get two more actions with your turn. Yep. <laughs> um, Money is good. You yeah. need to play your cards. Yeah, you need... You, if, you don't, if you can't pay for your cards, then they aren't very... The majority of them aren't very good. Uh, this lets you pay for them in a timely fashion, because you, if you're playing a scenario that's going to last you 15 turns, you don't want to be playing your assets on turn 14 or turn 13. Mm -hmm. You'll be playing them on the first couple of turns. Yeah. And this helps you surge out the resources that you might need for that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going to be in pretty much all the deck lists. So. Yeah. yeah. It's just a good card. If I'm yeah. not playing this in my level zero, I need a good reason. Like maybe I'm playing Dark Horse or. Or just to build a deck for me and I'm playing yeah. Dark Horse. <laughs> yeah. Or, that's actually pretty much yeah. it. I probably would never play Dark Horse of my own volition. Yeah. yeah. No, like, uh, there, there are a handful of like. Uh, better economic cards these days, like yes. Faustian Bargain and Crack the Case, and like, but all of them are like, except for Faustian Bargain, are situationally better. Yeah. Uh, Faustian Bargain is just better. Faustian and Bargain if, is If you're thinking about putting this in your, in your green deck, play Faustian Bargain instead, and then also maybe play this. But yeah, then probably play <laughs> this yeah, like, one too. Stand Together, Crack the Case, Ever Vigilant, all required. They're all very strong economy cards, but they also, like, have their niche. Whereas Emergency Cast is just, it's just money now. Money it's also now. got the supply subtyping, which is oh, like kind relevant of relevant to a future card. Yeah, there are there are some cards I think. that uh, <laughs> yes. that care about that. Yeah. I hate the list. All right, Travis, you have won the lottery. No. <laughs> okay, everybody, this is guts. It's a skill that commits for two brains. It's Nate. Max one committed for a skill test, and if the skill test is successful, you draw a card. So. This card is really good because the majority of the time that the encounter deck attacks you, it'll attack you through brain because there's already innate uses for your fist, your book, and your foot scores, which are like, you know, fighting, investigating, and um, evading. And to make, yeah, sorry, I don't do that one too often. Uh, <laughs> and so the game has to work to make the force stat, your willpower, relevant. And they do that through the encounter cards a lot of the times. Um, and because every scenario is going to ask you to make brain tests with negative consequences, then like not having those negative consequences is pretty good. Plus two brain is pretty reasonable, and drawing a card to replace itself is nice. It's like you didn't spend anything. Yeah. It doesn't cost any resources. It's just a bad thing doesn't happen to you. It's kind of like border protection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, guts is good. Uh... It's guts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you'd like yeah. to hear that rant, like, you can go watch our... Uh, well, Any of our new player guides. Yeah. yeah, there's like 50 of them. You can hear that 50 times. Yeah, yeah. Or some variation. I think for except for yeah. maybe like we didn't talk about it in like uh, uh, some of the one brain... I think, I think we did. We did also, like, we Mage talked about its absence. <laughs> yes, we did. We were like, we're not running guts because yeah, your be brain is bad. <laughs> Friend Edwards is going to yeah. fail anyway. Yeah, we've, yeah. Just, we've just accepted that we're losing this test. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll take these guys. Good. We got overpower, perception, and manual dexterity. These are all basically guts, but not as good. Like the same kind of concept where, you know, you're getting two to a skill, and then if the test is successful, you draw a card. These are used for fighting, for overpower, for investigating, uh, for perception, manual dexterity, evading, and also just generic foot, uh, brain, book, and foot test that the game might throw at you. Fist, book, and foot. Did I say brain? Yeah. yeah. Fist, book, and foot test that the game might throw at you. We'll just take that again, and we're good. We got it for the, uh, for the edit. I don't edit. Who am I kidding? Uh, actually, never. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but these are just like strong pieces that will find a home in a deck where you're going to be taking advantage of these. So like if you're a fighter, you're probably going to be running overpower to help you get over some of the higher uh, strength enemies. Uh, likewise with perception, you're going to be um, taking advantage of your perceptions to get over the high shroud locations. And then manual dexterity is there too. Uh, and <laughs> also here. Uh, and they uh, all replace themselves with the Tessic Successful, which is Travis said in the last one, is just kind of nice. Yeah. Mail Dexterity does have like a slight niche over the other two, but the other two are used almost exclusively offensively. But Mail Dexterity lets you like evade better, which isn't always relevant or something that you want to be doing. But also, Foot is like the second most asked for mm -hmm. test by the Mythos deck. Yes. It, it's like half of an offensive and half a defensive card. Yeah, and this it's it's you'll you're gonna wanna know when this deck is in there. I mean when when manual decks is in your deck. And you will because you've probably come from this video from a deck guide where this was flagged because they probably use their foot to do things or you know they just want to be a bit defensive from the uh mythos deck. Yeah like it's a solid option if you have three foot. Yeah. Putting yourself up to five is nice. Yeah and there will be times when you just kind of have to evade something and having because most of the time when you're in that position, at least for uh, Travis and I at the table, to we're now. just like, we're like, we have one foot that we can add from, because it's just a wild <laughs> symbol, a right? <laughs> I made it just, four. Please, please, please. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a uh, manual dexterity. It's, it's less used and it's more like specific when you want it, but you will get use out of all these cards. Like all of the gray skills that replace themselves mm -hmm. are good. No, they're never, mm -hmm. they're never bad. Yeah. All right, Brian. Well, I shouldn't say oh. never bad. Uh, like, obviously, if you don't intend to use the skill that they're for, they're yes. probably not great. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> now let's talk about the last one, Brian, which is... It's this kid fighting the yeah, lizard Yeah, it's unexpected courage. Uh, it's innate. <laughs> it commits for two wild. You don't draw a card. This mm -hmm. is all the other ones, except you don't draw the card. It doesn't replace itself. Instead, it pays for that in versatility. You can use this for literally anything. Uh, anytime the game asks you to make a test of any type, you can just be too higher on it if you'd like to be. Or make one of your teammates be too higher on it. Uh, this card's never a dead card. Overpowered and Perception are both practiced. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they are. That's also relevant. Yeah. Practiced, yeah, practiced. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but I forgot. It's all good. Um, yeah, this one, this one kind of just does all the things, right? Like you need to, you need to be better at punching a guy. This could make you better at punching a guy. You need to be like a little better on your brain test. Good, this will do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like this one also kind of fills that like defensive hole too. Like I, I can, I, I put these in a lot as like they're also like additional guts and they're also manual dexterities. They just mm -hmm. don't <clears throat> replace themselves after. It's like some of the best filler you can you can play. Yeah. You know what I don't like about this card though? The flare of text doesn't uh Yeah. It doesn't go with the art. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes most <laughs> selfish acts can come from the strangest places. This guy's about to get eaten by that lizard dog thing. How is that selfless? Uh, because he's stopping somebody else out of frame from being eaten by the lizard yeah, dog. It's like uh He's got a sword though. Like he Finn, came Finn to Edwards this. is like, Good job, kid, I'm gonna go. <laughs> See, yeah, no, but the kid's got a sword. Like he came he's he's prepared to do this. Like, the art does look like he yeah, has yeah, courage also, unexpectedly, yeah, but no, I agree. It's he's also, like, like, ten years old. Yeah. The so. flavor text should have just been, I'm going to kill this fucking dog. Yeah, that would be sick. <laughs> I'm not saying that, like, the art is bad for the card. I'm just the, saying The flavor it, text is a bit, yeah. Like, one of them is off. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Travis, I'm going to throw this next one to you. Okay. Oh, it's Backpack. Uh, yeah, so the level zero one is two to play, commits for a foot. Um, takes up a body slot, and it's an item. Has a reaction after it is play. You look at the top six cards of your deck for up to three non-weakness item or supply cards, and you attach them face down to backpack, and you shuffle your deck. You can play the cards uh, under backpack as if they're in your hand, and when there's no cards on it, it goes to discard. The difference between the uh, level zero and the level two version is the level two version um, commits for a uh, fist symbol in addition to the foot but also the good part is that it, it searches it's because it's heavier yes yeah uh you get to look at 12 cards instead of six yeah. which also, is actually huge it That's also like, costs one less too which oh, is it costs for nothing. also huge yes. yeah so the reason this one's here is because we prepared for the worst is really good <laughs> and this is like prepared for the worst but for any class i'm sure i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um it takes up the body slot, which is not in contention for most classes. 
Um, there's a couple of things that you might want to be running all over your body slot, like leather jacket in uh, like a Tony Morgan deck, for example, if you're playing Lonnie, or um, Bandolier if you're playing a Guardian, but then this is a little bit less relevant because you have access to prepared for the worst, or the Flamethrower as well. Um, but yeah, like most cult, m most investigators don't have a body slot that they care about. Yep. And most investigators are going to be playing items in their deck. Items are pretty or good. Or supplies. And supplies. Uh, supplies don't come out. There aren't too many of them. But uh, emergency cash is a supply. So yep. yeah, you play them both. Yeah, backpack is like... Uh, like looking at 12 cards in your deck is actually insane. Like yeah, any... Yeah, it's an, and like, like you have a thirty card deck. You draw five to start. There's twenty five cards left in your deck. It's a thirty three card deck, probably. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. It's so it's like slightly like most of the time you play this, you can be looking at about half of your deck. Yes, uh, and like if as Travis was saying, like you're gonna be running items. Like if you, for example, play Silas Marsh and you don't have prepared for the worst, but you live or die on your weapon because you're the goon and your job is to kill things. Mm -hmm. This does a great job of getting you there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You're playing a Seeker, you can go dig out magnifying glasses and fingerprint kits and Hawkeye folding cameras. You're playing a Mystic, you can go dig up your St. Hubert's Key or your um, your Holy Rosary or your even like just your Ritual Candles, yep. Spirit of the Taint, like there's all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then also like, especially like if you do end up grabbing some supplies and as more supplies may enter the game too, they kind of just now don't exist in your deck and you can just grab them when you need them too. Right? Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah, right now most of the supplies are blue and pertain to extra bullets, which uh, is nice. It's kind of cool, you know? Yeah, if you're not playing Flamethrower yeah. or Bandolier, this is, like, actually a fantastic card for Guardians. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there are a great many investigators whose signature asset is an item. Yep. And uh, the difference between playing something like Zoe with her cross in play and Zoe with her cross not in play, it's pretty noticeable. Yeah, the reason this one made it to the list now so insisted on is is was released from Return of the Forgotten Age, so we haven't had like that much time to play with it um, compared to a lot of the other cards that appear on these lists. But um, when I was doing the expand investigator guys, I kept doing up decks, and I was just like, man, like it's so good if you can just have the cards that you play the game all the time. This card lets you do that. And like also the uh, the thing too, the Return of the Forgotten Age, we have the level two version first because I do think it is just. Obviously, they doubled the numbers and halved the number that is the bad number. Oh, yeah, like, level like, zero backpack is fine, but, but it you is can only miss. okay. Yeah, you can definitely, like, you and I have both whiffed in our recent yeah. campaign, right? The level two backpack is, it's such a low investment cost and does so much. Yeah. Strong card. Let's see what's next. All right, this one, a lot of people might be like, but Justin, this is a weird one to put on the list, but this was one of the ones we wanted to put on, Flashlight. This is a two-cost uh, item item <laughs> that takes up the hand yeah, slot, yeah. Uh, commits for a book, uses three supplies as an action, spend a supply, investigate your location, get minus two shroud for this location, for this investigation, sorry. Um, this is, uh, especially when you have a smaller collection, like this finds a good home. And even like looking at it now, this card is essentially just like three plus two to your books, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then also for, That's like... It's better than that. It is. And then also, like, the reason it gets better is when you, say, for example, are someone with lower book, uh, and you still want to help the team out because your job is the flex and you're still getting clues, or if you're playing solo and you just need to get clues, too, uh, minus two shroud, if the, uh, the shroud of your location is two or lower, this will put it to zero, which means unless you draw the auto fail, you will succeed the test. Yeah. 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 You have... You you must tie its value because you cannot get a negative test, like a negative result, right? Yeah. Like your, your skill value will never be negative and you get to win ties. Yeah. There's a lot of cases like, especially when playing with limited card pool, if you don't know what to put in your deck, even if you're like the monster fighter, just throw in a flashlight or two. Mm -hmm. Like it's very hard, like there's very few situations where getting clues is not relevant. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like he's having a good time though. No. No, he's just got a wrench. Yeah. It'd be cool if we got like socket wrench as a card and they just reuse the art but like shift it. <laughs> oh, he's so funny. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think there's too much to say about flashlight other than the fact that like it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Brim. So these next ones also like they aren't staples in the fact that like they fit in every deck, but you're commonly going to grab them. They're really easy to put in your deck and we're going to have to talk about them in the future, so we might as well just talk about them now. 
hits it's all Charlie of Kane. <laughs> it is. Uh, charisma. It's uh, permanent. Costs three XP. You have one extra ally slot. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's all there is. Um, why would you might want an additional ally slot? You ever you ever been playing the game and you're like, man, I wish I didn't have to have Doctor Milan as my ally. You don't have to. Jones is like, you could have no. two of them. Like, actually, no, not yeah. really. <laughs> um, also, there are some neat things you can do with stacking up allies. Like, you can get a punch off your B cop and a punch off your Lonnie Ritter. Or, you know, even uh, if you want to play your Greta Wagner and uh, also your Alice Luxley, build some sort of weird machine where <laughs> when you kill an enemy, you get to ping a new enemy. And, yeah. Yeah, just if you want. Yeah. Allies are strong. They are uh, strong. Probably some of the strongest stuff in the game, and having more of them is good. You don't just, like, jam it. Like, you don't need it all the time, but you're going to know when you yeah. want it, which is quite common. We usually end up picking up charismas yeah, as we any, go. Any time that I have more than one specific ally that I want in my deck, I probably want, want to buy charisma. If I'm playing Dunwich, I definitely want charisma. There's so yeah, many people Yeah, Dunwich, you kind of just have to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, like, if you want to, if you're just playing, I'd say more than, like, more than four allies in your deck, like, realistically, unless you're playing, like, Tommy Molden, like, you're going to need charisma mm -hmm. to make, get real use out of those. Yeah. Yeah, because most... you're playing, like, six or seven allies in your deck, like... Yeah, any, any time that you're playing non-disposable allies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because recently I've just been building just, like, my one ally deck, right, but... If there's times where you're going to, like, I could still use this guy later, just grab a charisma and then just grab the guy you want, right? Yeah. 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 All right, Travis. The same but different. Yeah, it's Relic Car. It's uh, also a permanent asset that you pay three experience for, and it gives you an, extra, an additional accessory slot. So it's a lot more niche than charisma, as there's a lot less competition for the accessory slot, but it's still worth noting, mostly because it's the same card, and I don't want to talk about them in every video. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you want to have two accessories in play, buy this. And if you don't want to have two accessories in play, probably don't. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. as the as the card pool gets bigger, there's just going to be more accessories that do things. Mm -hmm. So this card yep. is going to be in the future. We're going to have to talk about it more. So now we don't have to. Yeah, Easy. there are also <laughs> many accessories that benefit from stacking a second copy of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Holy Rosary, you now have plus two brain. Or, you know, Lucky Cigarette Case, if you succeed by two or more, you get to draw two cards. Rabbit's Holy foot, you get the plus two brain and then yeah, four yeah, blast yeah, tokens. That would be sick. Yeah, right. I, I actually been buying Cause... Relic Hunter a lot recently, just because like also like it's one of those things if you already have your relic slot, but you're late in a campaign and you're like I have a lot of trauma, you can now just grab like an elder sign. Elder sign, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever actually bought a relic hunter. Really? I don't think so. I've bought Relic Hunter to house a garot wire. Yeah. Um, and. I was I considering buying a second one, one in an Ursula Downs run hmm. because it turns out most of the good relics in the game take out the, yeah. Take yeah. Out the accessory slot. And also, what am I going to do if I'm not buying Relic Hunter and pretending I'm Tia Guerrero? It's true. Yeah, it's true. You know? I did play with Relic Hunter once for that Tony Morgan deck you built for me, Justin. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever purchased yeah. it for myself. Mm -hmm. Now, it's one of those ones like, yeah, you'll know when you want it. Oh, yes. Because yeah. also, like, what's a relic that you play in, like, Seeker or Guardian? God. It's going to be Holy Rosary and Guardian. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you don't really need, like, you don't really, like, do the stuff that... Like, Hollow does. Mirror sometimes in Guardians. Yeah. Um, but even then, like, you don't really need Carolyn, to... In Carolyn, I play, <laughs> <laughs> like, St. Hubert's Key sometimes. Yeah, no, and, like, I, if there was one that probably could, but... it would be, like, her to get... The, but I think, yeah, just your style of decks don't really... Yeah, I don't play a lot of those. accessories. Yeah. yeah, I just want to play two seal with the Elder Sign so I can be like, whoops, guys, sorry, I have to sell, seal the blue token. I think in a, Who did that? I think in Survivor it's going to become more common um, because both uh, mm. Nightmare Bobble and Lucky Rabbit's Foot are good, right? So I think in Survivor yeah. you're going to see more of this, especially as more accessories come out. But right now, you'll know when you want it. It's not like you must find a reason to not put this in like other staples, but this in Charisma, you're just going to know when you want it. Yeah. Sweet! We've finished all the staples. It's only taken us six weeks of our life, but we've got in there. And it's not fair. It's six weeks of their lives, too. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you, you had to listen to us talk for six weeks? It's a nightmare. Um, but in the near future, we're going to be doing the... Um, 
extended deck guides. We are just waiting for Edge of the Earth to come out. So in the meantime, we're going to do another some, another round of archetype videos to catch up on some of the ones that you guys have been requesting that we haven't gotten through on our list yet. But there are things made for them, so you don't have to worry about that. We uh, have them all. You guys have not hit any that Travis did not get. He destroyed it. It was a big list. <laughs> it was a big list. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.